Ariel Hawani getting set for UFC 118 with Kenny Florian, who faces Gray Maynard this Saturday night live on pay-per-view. And Kenny never ceased to impress. Uh, you, you, you're, you're Spanish at the uh, at the press conference. Very impressive. Your suit here today. This is great stuff. You're looking great. I, I know I had to dress up. I'm with the best dressed man interviewer in, in MMA. So, you know, I wanted to compete a little bit. And I appreciate that. But this is a very big deal for you, right? I mean, Boston, you, did you ever think seriously that you'd be able to fight in a UFC fight in Boston? Man, you know, if you told me this five years ago, even maybe even three years ago, I probably would have said you're crazy. You know, uh, it's amazing how sport, how far the sport has come. And uh, again, I've said this a thousand times, but I really do feel like I'm, I'm walking out and living my dream on Saturday night to, to compete here uh, at the TD Garden in my hometown. Nothing better than that. Win or lose, I feel like I've won, you know, I really do. Uh, we know that athletes are creatures of habit, and you've fought all over the country. But since this one is in your, you know, essentially your backyard, yeah. are you, you know, doing it a little differently, or are you staying in a hotel, all that stuff, just to, to keep the habit up? I, honestly, I hate living out of a hotel room. I've done it for the last, probably the last couple of years doing it, and I feel so much more comfortable when I'm sleeping in my own bed, when I can go to my own refrigerator, get the food that I want. Especially my, my diet is so specific, uh, and my requirements are kind of specific, and. And it's going to be so much easier, you know, uh, losing the weight is so much easier. Being comfortable, uh, you know, in, in your own surroundings is, is very important, I think. And, uh, you know, having been at a bunch of games over at the TD Garden, having been there before, uh, everything just seems very, very comfortable. So I think that's de a definite advantage. What's your sense in terms of the buzz in the area here? Are people excited about the UFC coming to town for the first time? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. As soon as it was announced, even before it was announced, I mean, that's probably the most common question I've gotten in my career besides how did you get into this was when is the UFC coming to Boston? And it's finally here. Uh, it, it's awesome. I know the fans are fired up, and uh, it, it's it's going to be amazing. It's gonna, You guys are going to hear a loud, loud crowd on Saturday night. Let's talk about fighting. I see a man to my right over here, Faraz Zahabi. Uh, it seems as though ever since you linked up with the TriStar Gym in Montreal, something has changed for you. Not to say that you weren't, you know, doing great stuff before then, but, you know, the, the Guida fight, the Takanori Gomi fight, I mean, just impressive performances. What changed for you in your career after you linked up with these guys? You know, it's not coincidence. There's no doubt about it. These guys, Faraz is, is at a completely different level, I feel, and as far as uh, trainers go and, and his approach to the game and methods, and, and he's inspired a lot of the other coaches and, and uh, I've embraced the, the boxing style and, and uh, added, it, added in other elements and, and different training partners, I think, always helps. Going there for the first time, feeling those butterflies of training with all, you know, great fighters that are there. Um, it's important to be out of your element, to, be, to not be comfortable uh, for sparring because that's, what, that's the way you feel during a fight. You know, you're essentially going against someone you've never faced before. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's made me a much, much better fighter technically, physically, mentally. Um, and I've incorporated a lot of those methods and all the coaches are really and, and we've just upped our game and, and um, I think that's, that's the, the main reason for, for the involvement I think with, with my game. Your elbows have always been one of your most dangerous tools, but you mentioned the boxing style. Now, after we saw what you did to Gomi, it seems as though your jab could really be something to use in your advantage, especially because that's a tool that a lot of MMA fighters don't use. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the jab is one of the most important uh, elements for establishing your range, uh, keeping that distance, um, and, and that was a lot of the the game plan which revolved around for, for a guy like Takanori Gomi who throws such wild punches with so much power. And, uh, and and you saw, you know, a lot of people say, well, Gomi's back. Well, he didn't go anywhere. He was the same guy. He was still in shape for my fight, I believe. Um, you know, was it a different environment for him? Yeah, probably. But I think he's the, he was the exact same fighter he was for the Tyson Griffin fight. It's all a matter, matter of styles. And, and I think uh, my, my reach, my length, uh, and my jab gave him a lot of problems. And, and I think it will give a lot of problems in the future. I, uh, you know, I have a really long reach for, for a lightweight, and that's something I need to use for all my fights, you know. Have you evolved since that fight? Absolutely. You know, even in that fight against Gomi, I, I had a staph infection going into that fight, a, a, a big problem with my knee, the bursa. But, uh, you know, I was not 100% for that fight, and, and I feel like I'm a different fighter technically since that fight as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a much better fighter since the Gomi fight, and uh, I'm excited to go out there and, and compete and kind of show what I've been working on.
Gray Maynard walks into this fight with a bit of a chip on his shoulder because he thinks uh, that he was, you know, overlooked in the title picture because he already beat Frankie Edgar. Yeah. What kind of a fight are you expecting to see on Saturday? Uh, it's going to be a tough fight. There's no doubt about it. I'm expecting a, a war. Um, Gray Maynard's, not, you know, he's never going to be an easy fight for anybody. And uh, style-wise, I think it's the toughest fight of my career. Um, he's huge for a lightweight. Uh, has the best wrestling credentials out of any lightweight, uh, and um, he's undefeated. And, and those are all things that happen for a reason. He trains very hard. He trains with great camp out at Extreme Couture. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. This is the, the best time in my career, I think, to face a guy like Gray Maynard. A lot of wrestlers these days face criticism because they don't finish fights. Guys like John Fitch, Gray Maynard as well, and there's a lot of pressure on them to stand and trade and to look you know, flashy with knockouts and things like that. Do you think he's going to uh, stand and trade with you, or do you think he's going to try to take you down? You know, he may. He, he may. I don't think that, that would be a great choice, but you know, he could. He could very well stand and trade and, and bang. He did with Nate Diaz, even though he probably should have taken him down and mixed it up. I think he knows how important this fight is. I think he realizes uh, that, you know, well, obviously with the announcement, he gets a shot at the title. So he knows how important this fight is. I think he needs to do uh, what's going to get him the win. And I think that's, you know, keeping it close on the feet and probably look to take me down later on the round and try to steal the fight. Final question, and it's about that title shot. Dana White said at the press conference, Gray Maynard wins, he gets a shot at the title. It seems as though he also said that if you win, you get a shot at the title. A, is that in fact true? And B, I mean, are you surprised a little? Because you're only two fights removed from losing to BJ Penn, and a lot of people would say, well, why does he get three shots at the title? Well, you know, I, I think more than anything else, I think it should be about the two best fighters facing each other. That's what it really should be about. Um, you know, it, we're three fights removed, uh, been over a year. Maybe by the time uh, the next championship fight is set, it will be a year and a half or whatever it is. And I think it's time. It shouldn't be about, you know, who's the, the guy who can talk the best, you know, who's a different face, who's a good-looking guy. It shouldn't be about that. It should be about who the two best fighters and Put them in a cage. Let's see who the champ is. And um, I think the four best lightweights in the world are, are going to fight on Saturday night. So why should the winners face each other? Thank you, Kenny, and best of luck. My pleasure, man. Thanks.